Trash is one of the last of the Firefly episodes and comes two episodes after Ariel, which will be important later on. But it starts with the far more important matter of Mal being in the desert, stark naked. Eh, these things happen, usually when hookers are involved. <sighs> that went well. My plan to become a prophet is off to a good start. Rolling back the clock 72 hours, Mal arrives at the site of a cargo transfer for a smuggling run, part of which is run by an old friend of his, a friend with good news. He's married now to a girl named Bridget. A girl with a rather familiar face, actually. So, you guys have met. After the titles, the friend's not too sure what to do when his buddy and his wife start trying to beat the shit out of each other when nobody's said anything to be offended by. When he finally breaks it up, Mal recounts the events of Our Mrs. Reynolds, and after Saffron screws up and reveals she already knows Mal's name, she gets dumped on this planet by her now ex-husband to be stuck with her other ex-husband, who is not giving her the slightest benefit of the doubt. But face it, hubby, I'm really hot. Yeah, I'm not arguing that, but it's not my penis that's holding the gun. She's trying to pressure Mal into giving her a ride off this lifeless moon, but she can't tease, beguile, or guilt him into that. So she talks about a big heist she's got planned, and now Mal is ruining it for her, and denying himself a chance to get in on it. He's not listening, and next thing we see, he's picked up by a very confused serenity on account of the fact he's dealing with a nosebleed. On the one hand, he met a really good friend who wouldn't hit him. But if he did hit him, it wouldn't just result in a nosebleed, it'd be picking bits of his face out of his fist. Inara asks to see him in her shuttle, offering him tea, and immediately Mal is on guard. So she finally comes straight to the point. The shitholes that he's been to lately have been devoid of clients for her, and she isn't writing serenity for the occasional Alliance cavity search. Mal is not in a good mood, so when she implies that this might be deliberate to keep her from sleeping with other people, he really takes issue with that and even more so when she says that the last big job he pulled was the one in Ariel, as opposed to smuggling bobbleheads, which was one of the more recent ones. Things get heated to the point where she calls him a petty thief, and it's the petty that really gets him. He's honest with himself about what he does. As we discussed in Bushwhacked, Mal has a code, not rules, so he knows the rules that he is cheekily breaking. Outraged at the idea that Inara thinks that of him, Mal reveals that he's got Saffron locked inside a crate and asks her about the job. Saffron explains that Durin Hamer has valuable Earth That Was relics, but the prize being the first handheld laser weapon used to defeat a bunch of evil space cats. Hamer is a first-class prick, an Alliance bioweapons creator who would hit targets with stuff that he wanted so he could easily loot them afterwards. Well, turn about is fair play. We won't gas him or anything. We'll just head in when he's gone and take the super valuable laser antique. Wash has an important question, though. I was wondering, what's she doing on the ship? <laughs> Didn't she try to kill us? Mel does the best he can to get past this issue. We're in space. How did she get here? She hit. I don't recall oh. pulling over. But it's not easy. She did try to kill all of them. Still, the sound of money can, if not cover over a multitude of sins, at least convince grudges to go take a bathroom break. Well, Inara shows up calling them idiots for that, though, but the shoe's on the other foot. The same way that Mal, deny it all he wants, but it's true, doesn't like her sleeping with other men, Inara detests Saffron and the way that she manipulated Mal. Is always not too happy either. See there? All you gotta do to be a rich woman, hun, is get over it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Looks like that grudge hit the bathroom before leaving the house this morning. There's two issues to deal with. First is making sure Saffron doesn't realize who Simon and River are, so they'll be staying out of sight. Jane's not too thrilled, especially when River points out that Jane is a girl's name, but after he leaves, River says that Jane's nervous. Not about Saffron, though, that they'll know something happened on Ariel. 
There are times when having a witch around is inconvenient. And speaking of a word that rhymes with that, Saffron overhears Anara taking off to meet with some clients, but not before warning that Mal's making a mistake going along with this plan. That done, now it's time for the real question. The reason they can't just walk out with the ray gun is that it will set off the alarm. The answer is, we throw the ray gun away. The garbage chute is the hole in the security, so all they have to do is arrive, blend in with the folks setting up for a big party, slip inside with the stolen credentials, defeat the containment around the laser, and then throw it out. A drone then comes to pick up the full bin and carries it away to have the contents destroyed. Instead, Kaylee is going to reprogram it to fly somewhere else so they can collect it later. Easy peasy dumpster greasy. So they take their firefly under the bin so that Jane and Kaylee can reach it from the roof while Mal and Saffron are heading inside. Mal's impressed by this collection of junk, and I'm particularly impressed with the idea that upon fleeing the earth, someone thought it was a good idea to bring along a telephone booth. I figure there must have been one person who was really well connected and insisted that there was still an off chance that it would draw in Superman. Well, as I've said before, rule of any heist is simple. You can't tell the audience the plan. The moment you do that, the plan won't work. Watching people do what they have set out to do as planned, that's not good drama. So you have to screw up the plan to show our heroes needing to adapt on the fly. Otherwise, you have to not let the audience know what the plan is, so they could try to figure it out as you're going along. And of course, there's the kind that does both, where what looks like the unforeseen ruining the plan was in fact part of the plan all along. But this is tricky to pull off. Screwing up the plan is usually the best. Think of it as the narrative equivalent of God closing a door but opening a window.